Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to talk about insiders selling shares and is this a big massive deal because one thing that I've seen over the last kind of well last kind of week two weeks is a lot of bears using the case that of insiders selling shares is time to start panicking and I'll kind of give my thoughts on situations where it is worrying if insiders are selling and when the situation that insiders are selling isn't that big of a deal really so we're going to cover all this today it's one that I wanted to talk because I've seen two companies that I'm invested in there's been some insiders selling and them two companies that I'm invested in in the comments I've seen them on that their video is being used against that company so yeah i thought it'd be a good one to cover this today and the things that i like to see and the things that i don't like to see so if you could smash the like button if you want to join the patreon the link is in the description tonight we're going to be going over a few things on a private live stream so uh, make sure you do join that and uh, if you do want to start buying some shares there's some links to some brokers in the description as well so how big of a deal is this and how important is it to me as an investor so i'm going to try to cover this as a selling point of view, if we see insiders selling and insiders buying. Now, first of all, in case of looking into a company, if I'm going to look into a company, if I'm looking to buy a company, so if I'm looking into a company like DraftKings or Visa or Microsoft, on a scale of how important it is to me, it's probably quite quite low. Um, it's something that I will consider and look into for sure, but it's nothing that will be my major top five of looking into a company. Because at the end of the day, if you're buying a company, people aren't gonna invest in a company because they're seeing a lot of insiders buying or a lot of insiders selling. It's not gonna happen. That is not the reason people buy and sell shares. The reason people buy and sell shares is A, how is the company doing? What is the company's vision? How are they going to grow that? Is the market that they're in, the industry they're in, a growing industry? And that's the first thing they're going to be considering as an investor because we're looking at the company. That's that's what you're going to be considering. And then after that, they're going to look at how the revenue growth is going to perform. They're going to look at how the profit uh, performs. They're going to be looking at how the balance sheet is. They're going to be looking at uh, the management itself. How good is this management team? Those are all things that are going to be looked at prior to whatever the insiders is. Like, it's not a big deal in my opinion. It definitely doesn't come in the top five. That, you know, the insider, insider selling or buying will be quite low down. And you know, that is pure, like, one reason that people will not invest in a company is what is going on with the insiders. So I thought I'd make that clear straight away. Like, it, if we were to rate down the top five important things that you look into when investing into a company, insiders is not gonna come into that list. You know, people are gonna consider the whole com company first and the vision of the company and how it's going to grow and realistically the value of the share price is it going to be dropping if the people are selling in the company or are people buying in the company so first of all we'll go through the selling side of it so um yeah i think one there was tattoo chef and skills which both had insider selling which i think were used against because i made a video on them too actually uh this week and i've saw a few comments actually saying that oh it must be a bad company because the management are selling off a load of shares <laughs> not always true um so for one example one company that has historically had such an awful sell-off on the inside is walmart if you ever go into like an insider selling of like walmart it is the most ugly insider selling you'll ever see in your life there is literally just like shares of insiders sold off like every day from everyone that owns the company it is pretty ugly and <laughs> um, yeah so if you look at walmart they're if you went off, if you judged a company off insider selling, you wouldn't touch Walmart, and it's just been absolutely, like I said, the insiders just sold off huge. But you look at the share price, Walmart share price for a company, and let's not forget Walmart either. It's you know it's a brick and mortar stores. We know like the right the like rise of Amazon over the last kind of five ten years. Walmart's been a company that's been affected by uh, the likes of like an Amazon, uh, a lot of these online uh, sales. But Walmart have continued to do okay as a company and the share price is kind of going up. And you would say to a lot of these insiders that have been selling out of the company, like if you waited, if you carried on holding them, you would have a lot more shares up in value. But people have still bought into Walmart, the company's still done fine, the company's still, and that's a company under massive amounts of pressure, and it's still done fine. So you can argue the case, that's a prime example of one company has the most ugly insider selling but it's carry go, carrying on going up. And it's it's been a tough couple of years for that company as well. So that's just an example of that insiders doesn't really matter. You know, that company still performed under huge pressure. Now, the reasons insiders might sell, and sometimes people don't actually realize this, is that sometimes there'll be conditions where 
they're actually forced to sell some of these shares. There'll be contracts or little um, agreements to put in place where the insiders have to actually sell some of these shares at certain points. And sometimes when you just see it on a list of insiders sold, sometimes you might not be able to pick that up. Sometimes you can actually go out onto like a filing and actually see reasons why they've sold these shares. But yeah, sometimes you've got to consider as well, sometimes these shares are being sold for an, an actual reason that they're being forced to. Another one is, I'll put an IPO here, but I'll put a SPAC as well. You know, if a stock comes onto the stock market um, through an IPO, if they come on through a SPAC stock, more than likely at some point within the first 12 months, you'll see a lot of insiders selling out of that company in the first 12 months of it coming onto the stock market through an IPO, through a SPAC, or whatever, how it comes onto the stock market. You'll see a lot of insiders selling. It happens because you've got to think from our point of view, and also their point of view is like everyone that invests into a company has a you know if you're buying stocks you have a bit of a business mind going on you know you have a, a bit of a mind of like I'm putting my money into these stocks because I want to make money that's why we do it you know it's, you know you we we enjoy it I think as well like if you're watching this video I probably say that you enjoy putting your money into stocks and I enjoy putting money into stocks but the big reason why is that we can make a, a decent amount of money and these guys that are going onto the stock market with their company are no different from us. They might enjoy, you know, coming onto the stock market. It makes it easier for them to raise capital. But the big thing at the end of the day is that we're here to make money. I'm here to make money. You're here to make money. The people that are running these companies are here to make money. And you think about some of these companies that come onto the stock market. They might have been running these companies for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It's quite a long time, you know. Uh, I mean, how long have you... You guys watching you know this video right now how long have you been into stocks for you know you consider like if you invested into a company that long ago you would want to see some rewards at some point you know quite often we we sell companies after you know or well i do personally i sell companies after holding them you know two three four five years some of these guys have had investments in these companies for five ten fifteen twenty years they've put a lot of hard work into this company they've put a lot of hard-earned cash into it and when, pre coming onto the stock market, it's very hard for them to take some rewards from building up this company. And now it's so easy for them to sell some shares instantly. You know, the click of fingers, they can sell some shares. They're gonna do it because they're gonna treat themselves. So if you see like a couple of like 5%, 10%, you know, stakes hold off on the company, don't blame the guys because the whole reason probably why they came onto the stock market is that they wanna get some rewards for this thing they've built up over many years, you know? Sure, it might be a little bit easier to raise cash, but they're not doing it, you know, for me and you, so we can buy shares into the company. They're doing it also to help themselves because maybe they want more cash for the company, but also for themselves, they probably want a little bit of a reward. And can you blame them? You know, they've put a lot of investment, a lot of time, they built up a billion dollar company. There's nothing wrong for them to sell a few shares. And sometimes that even works in our favor because if you actually watch an IPO and um, there is a little bit of a sell off after the IPO and that sometimes, is tied with like insider selling. You can actually get them at really good prices. So it also helps us get some companies at cheap prices as well. And that that's exactly ties in with my next point as well, which is profit taking. What I was just saying there, you know, me, you, we do it for to make money. Same for these guys. You know, they they invest their time, their money into this company. You can't blame them for taking a little bit of profit now and then. That is um, something really important. Now, the one big flag that I would have with if I saw some selling, is if I saw massive amounts of stake sold off in the company. So if I was looking into a company and I was like, the CEO or the founder sold off their stake in their company, you know, from a 35% holding down to a 5% holding very quickly, that'd be something that I'd be like, okay, that's a bit strange. Or if there were loads of people selling out of the company, then I might consider that. But the only thing that would really, really worry me is if there was massive chunks or massive holdings. Because one thing I do like is like seeing a founder or the CEO having a big stake in a company because then I know his best interest is for that company still to do very well because he has a lot of his capital in it. That's always a bullish sign to me when I'm investing into a company. But yeah, that would be the only time when I would consider like if the, the stake reduction was huge, that'd be, be the only time where I was like, okay, what's kind of going on here? But if it was only a little sale, you know, if the CEO founder had a 30% stake and then he dropped it down to a 25% stake, 
I would have no problem with that. You know, if you're still the major shareholder, still has a big holding, there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. But the only time is if I saw a massive drop or loads of insiders selling or a big reduction, that would be the only time. Selling for me is the one that I'm not hugely bothered about. That's the only one I would not consider as a, a massive thing. I mean, I guess I was gonna say that if, you, especially if you see selling at 52 week highs, that, that's, you know, something that's probably gonna happen on the stock. If you saw a company then totally sell off, sell off and then they were selling at 52 week lows, maybe that would be something that I would be like, why are they selling at 52 week lows when they could have sold at 52 week highs a few months ago? Maybe that could be something that I do consider. Uh, that's one I just thought of right there, but yeah, that, that would, selling to me is the least important part of someone uh, on insider selling. For me, the biggest thing is buying. If I see buying, buying for me in a company is a lot bigger than selling in a company. Because buying for me is the most important because it shows that the insiders are very bullish on where the company is right now. Either the insiders are thinking, there's gonna be a lot of catalysts that come into play, which are gonna help the company go up in share price and revenue and profit in the next few years, and they believe the company is undervalued, or the company is undervalued right now. And that's the sign, because if insiders are willing to put more cash into the company, because they think it's undervalued, because that, that would be the only reason why they're buying it. They're only buying into the company because right now they think the prices are undervalued and they're gonna make money. And for me, buying is the biggest bullish sign when looking at insiders. It's the exact same reason if you go back to uh, like March 2020, if you look at a lot of companies there, I would say if you look into a lot of companies, at least 50% of the companies had some form of insiders buying in March 2020, because a lot of these companies, or a lot of the insiders in the companies, knew at them prices their company was massively undervalued or they knew they weren't going to get affected by the CV situation that much and they would make money. And it's funny enough that sometimes now, uh, Hollywood Ball was a big one, like Hollywood Ball had massive amounts of insiders selling in March 2020 and I think it was about like two months ago, some of them started selling off some shares. You can't blame them, you know, they've done what we would have done, they've bought in a March 2020 dip, thought, you know, we're a decent company, we'll make it through this. The share prices are coming back because people are starting to realise now like, oh, they're all going to open up, they're going to do very well in the next 12 months. Share prices are starting to show that, okay, I put my my capital at risk here, I take my rewards, they're just exactly like me and you. And that was a prime example of you know a company where people were buying in the dip, insiders were buying in the dip, and now they're just taking a little bit of profit and you can't blame them. So for me, buying is definitely the one that I would look out for more than selling because buying is a statement from the insiders, in my opinion, that they are looking at the company and thinking, people are sleeping on what they're gonna be doing over the next few years, and the revenue isn't gonna go up, or the share price is undervalued, or it's too massively sold off. So that is definitely the more bullish one out of the two that I look for. But overall, like I say, this isn't for me a huge, uh, like I would not massively consider this when I'm buying it. But if I was to see, if I was to look at the insider tr trading, that if I was to look at these situations on selling or buying, that's what I would look for. Yeah, ballot buying is definitely more important. Selling, like I say, I don't worry about too much. There's only a couple of things that I would question if I did see them on the selling side. But even then, it wouldn't be, a massive make or break for me, uh, but this would definitely help to my bullish case if I did see insiders buying if I was looking to a company. So, hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you could smash the like button, if you are new, subscribe that'd be absolutely amazing. Hope you enjoyed the video as always, and I'll see you on the next one.